All right, welcome back. We have a notebook file open with a title of, I've just put plot empty cars, and it's a new file I created. And I loaded up the library ggplot2 because guess what? We're doing more plotting, all the plots. So I have that in the first chunk. Remember the command is command or control option I to insert a chunk if you want. We're gonna play with the empty cars data set. So let's just go ahead and say, um, cars a ridge and we're going to set that equal to empty cars empty cars comes with the R in our studio so once you do that 32 observations of 11 variables we can take a look at it we have a whole bunch of different things here going on miles per gallon cylinders displacement etc close that out now with that let's see if we can do some programmatic uh, observations here for example I want to know what kind of structure uh, this cars original is. So I'm going to do str and we're going to type in cars ridge. And when I hit enter on that, what it gives us is the observations 32, 11 variables, and then the 11 variables are listed down um, the rows. The data type is num and the actual observations are listed going across as well and the dot 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 means hey there's more than what meets the eye here so this is just a snippet of what that is and just so you know if you want a summary of statistics you can also do summary and just type in cars ridge and the summary will give you the min max inter or first quartile third quartile mead median for every single feature and uh, these features are all numeric, so uh, statistics works pretty well on that, or the summary does. But let's not let's not worry too much about statistics right now. Let's create another chunk, Control, Option I, and what we're going to do is we're going to plot this as a scatter plot. Remember, we're going to do um, a GG plot, but let's store it as a plot called P, and we'll just say this is equal to a GG plot, and we're going to bring in our data. The data is going to equal to our cars original right and then we're going to have an aesthetic aes and in that aesthetic we're going to say x equals we'll say x equals the weight if you see up here i still have it on my screen weight should be a variable wt right here and we'll do weight versus uh, qsec whatever that means quarter mile we'll find out what that means in a second so we'll just do weight and we'll do the y variable is equal to q sec and then remember if we run this chunk nothing's going to happen it's just going to set us up saying hey we've got a placeholder basically stored as variable p now let's add a geometry to it so we're going to say p plus geom point remember it's like math you can add graphics basically to this so now if i run this little chunk you should get a a geometric point or scatter plot with weight as the x-axis and q sec as the y now what if we wanted to add more aesthetics? We can add aesthetics up here in AES, but you can also add it in the geom point. You can also say AES and maybe pick a color, color equals, and we'll say the color is equal to, um, well, I don't know. Let's pick something. Let's pick another one of these. Uh, DRAT, D-R-A-T. Let's just give it a try and see what that looks like here. Let's run this whole chunk again. And so basically what that does is it adds one more variable called color. Well, variable is probably not the right term, but uh, dimension, I guess. The dimension of color is now on this graph. So now as it gets uh, lighter blue, you can see the different DRAT levels, whatever that even means. Remember to check that out. Let's, we can go to the console and just hit question mark and then type in empty cars and then over here it'll give us what all that means now technically you should definitely know your data before you start playing with it but this is just um, me having fun teaching you guys how to do this a little bit so drat is rear axle ratio so as the rear you know you can't really find a whole lot of patterns in this in fact those are pretty small right now you can't even see a whole lot of differences in color or whatnot. So let's move on. Let's add a couple more things here. Um, let's let's make a size instead of the color. Let's make that a size uh, dimension. And you can do that. I haven't shown you that yet. See now there's different sizes. You can kind of see in this chart right here that the 4.5, the larger ones, 
are sort of kind of here and then over here you get kind of smaller ones i still have no idea about cars so i have no clue what that means but i want to show you these little different dimensions you can add to it now one thing i want to show you is something like if you go back up here let's take a look at cylinder right right now it says cylinder is 4.0 6.0 6.18 etc etc right and remember when we typed in our structure let's redo structure here i'm going to write i'm going to hit that button again on structure to get this particular table here now let's go down to cylinder and we see cyl and we see it as number well cylinders is a number but in most practical aspects we're going to count cylinder as a discrete variable a factor it's either a six cylinder or a four cylinder you see what i'm saying here there's no actual uh, yes there's a number of cylinders but what you would really want to call that is a four cylinder car or a six cylinder car we're not really caring about that it's a digit we just say I think you get the idea of what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and try to chart something now. Let's do Command Option I on that. And let's type in our P. Remember, P is just plain setting up the graph with the data. And we're going to go ahead and add a geom point to that. Don't forget, none of these are saved back to P. P is still row 18. P still equals this. Right? So when I add geom point right here, this is a different instance of that P. I'm not making any changes to P. I'm saying on line 19, add this particular um, thing to it and display it, but don't save it anywhere. This is not saved. Line 19 is not saved anywhere. So we can always reuse P and start from line 18, no matter what we did over here. It doesn't make any difference. I just want to make that point clear. So when I add a new aesthetic, it's not writing over the old one or anything. It simply is a new aesthetic here. So we're going to do color is equal to cylinder. And what I want to show you is what this chart looks like. Let's take a look. And instead of having this now, purposely, what ggplot automatically does is it makes this into a continuous spectrum of colors. But we know in reality there's no 5.5 cylinder car or a 5.8. So whatever these numbers are, we know that this is not completely true. You can't get a 7.225 cylinder car because cylinder is not an actual numeric. So let's force this into being a factor by just simply typing in factor inside Make sure you have enough parentheses to cover everything. So now it's going to convert it to a factor before it turns it in, before it assigns it to the color inside of the aesthetic inside of the jam point. <laughs> I hope you got all that. But now you see we have a four cylinder, a six cylinder, and an eight cylinder in very, very discrete colors. Like these are it blue, green, and red. Now you can see some patterns here. As you can see, as the weight goes up, on the right hand side horizontal axis as you go forward it looks like you have all eight cylinder vehicles right here right all this blue and what else do we notice the q sec I didn't we didn't even look what that meant oh yeah we did q sec means quarter mile time so the quarter mile time for the eight cylinders are a lot higher no they're actually not a lot higher they're actually you know i guess somewhere in the middle the highest quarter mile time is up here. But you would think that the lowest quarter mile time would not be, well, would it be an eight cylinder? I guess it shows. These are very low times, these two down at the bottom, and they're both eight cylinder. Then you get to the green, you have some six cylinders, and then over here in the red, you have four cylinders. So in other words, what's kind of cool is now you can see that they are clustered. And you can kind of see these groups here, like, hey, what's up with these points right here all clustered together? Are they maybe some maybe there's something else in this in this data that's describing why this is the case. Now I don't know what that is yet, but same thing with this outlier here. Like what is that? So it'd be worth diving in and seeing what exactly that is. Let's say we want to make another scatter plot. Um, and this time we just want them all to be a certain color. We can do that as well, play with some of the attributes and the parameters. So we'll just do a P plus G on point, but instead of adding more aesthetics like color or size, we're just gonna go ahead and say, well, we are gonna say color, but we're gonna make it just equal like some color and run that. So it's blue instead of black by default. And you can obviously change the color to whatever you want. There it is. Now that we're, we played with the 
empty cars. Let's go ahead and take a look at the diamonds data set one more time. Remember, remember you can do view, and we're going to do lowercase diamonds, and we'll take a quick look at what that data set looks like. Here it is in the GUI interface here. Lots of data, cool stuff, cut, color, clarity, depth, all those things. So there's your diamond data set. And remember, one thing you can do is you can find the structure of it with just like we did with the empty cars. Take the structure, you can see some ordered ordered factor data, numerics, you have integers, and I didn't show you what factors are explicitly within like a data data frame. But there's factor levels, and these levels are, you can either be a D, E, F, and G. In other words, I'll explain it now, but we'll explain it more later down as we go. When it says five levels or seven levels or eight levels, these levels are, hey, these are the categories, and that's it. If you try to add another category, it will give you an error. So this data is here, and it says, if your cut is one of these five levels, you're good to go. You try to add data. Say, down the road, you say, I want to add another row, and you say, I'm going to create one called semi-good, and you try to add it to this cut feature, it will just give you an error, which is what you want. Now, there's ways to override that and add a factor, and add a level, I mean. So it just tells you how many different categories there are for cuts. There's five different cuts, there's seven different colors, and there's eight different clarities. All right, let's do another chunk here. We'll add a chunk, and we're going to go ahead and just plot this. We're going to call this one, um, uh, I don't know, diamond data, and we're going to assign that to a plot. We'll explicitly say the data is equal to diamonds, and we're going to put our aesthetics as, we're going to run caret, we're going to say x is equal to the caret. In fact, you don't even have to do the x. You can just say caret because it explicitly knows because it's the first one and order matters in this function. And your y is going to equal, um, we'll just go ahead and do price on that. And what are we going to do? Let's see, it's close parenthesis. Oh, no, two. We'll run that just to have our DD stored. And now that DD is stored, we can use DD and play with it a little bit. So let's go ahead and add a geometry to it, our geom point. And let's take a quick look at that. A lot more data. This is very, very, um, I guess, tight data. Uh, all this data is really close to each other. It's really hard to dis distinguish what's what. So in that case, let's do a little trick that we have. We're going to go ahead and do another chunk, and let's go ahead and do dd plus g on point. And this time we're going to set an alpha level. And alpha levels are going to come in handy quite a bit. Alpha level is basically your transparency level. When, when data is close, it'll let you know that. And I'll just give you a quick look to see what it looks like. I just put a point 0.2 in there. So you can kind of see where a uh, le least amount of data is plotted where it's lighter and then more data is where it's dark and you can change these levels around and, and just kind of get a you know a sense of what's going on with the data if I make it more closer to number one they're gonna be more dark overall and if I make it oops what did I do I don't know what I oh there we go now let's make it like you know 0 0.04 and you're just gonna have a lighter lighter colors where it's lighter. Just a nice little thing to have. We're going to start one more chunk and I'll show you how to subset data with a, a ggplot. Or again, our data is equal to diamonds and this is what we did normally. We had an aesthetic. We had x and y equals so we'll do caret and price and of course we have to add a geometry to that. We want the geometry point. Hit enter on that. And what we have is this cluster of fun. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put the um, just for fun, let's put the alpha value in there of 0.2. Now this is definitely cluttered. Let's say we wanted just a piece of this. We wanted the first 50 observations. So instead of diamonds, we can actually just subset it using the bracket notation here. And we can subset and say we want the first, say, one through 50 observations and comma, because we want every column, which we don't use every column, we're actually only using carrot and price, but I want every column available for the ggplot if we need it. So now we have this plot, because it's only the first one through 50, and at that point, we don't want, need an alpha value, so we can just set that as one, or we can get rid of it, and now we have our plot of our first 50. Let's say you want to do 50 through, 
100, you can do something like that, right? That's an interesting one right here, huh? Now, we can also do things like 50 through 100, and we can um, we can actually subset the, the columns, but we don't need to because the subsetting is really done right here in the aesthetic anyways. And if we subset it here, and we said, hey, we just want carrot and price, if we wanted something else later, we wouldn't be able to use it later because it would be subsetted here. So for the most part, you want to just bring in all your columns uh, at this point in the tutorials. I hope that gives you a little bit more insight on how to make some changes to the plots. And in the next tutorial, we'll definitely dive more into plots. We will probably be in plots for the next few tutorials, so stay tuned.